Grade 5 math number 9. Multiply by two-digit numbers. To multiply large numbers by two-digit numbers, we start out just as if we were multiply, multiplying by a one-digit number. Then we multiply the second digit to each place value, lining the products up according to their place value. Then we add both groups together. It looks like this. We start out just as if we're doing one place value. This one gets multiplied to the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. And then, when it's the second digit's turn, we multiply it to each place value, ones, then tens, then hundreds. But the answers get lined up like this. When we multiply the ones, we start putting the answers in the ones place value. See? Ones, tens, hundreds. But when we multiply the tens, we start putting the answer in the tens place value. See? Because we're multiplying tens. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Emma read 13 books a month for 15 months. How many books did she read in that time? So we're going to do 15 times 13. We do as if we were multiplying a one digit. We do 3 times 5 and then 3 times 1. 3 times 5 is 15. We carry the 1 over here to regroup and put the 5 down. And then 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, okay? Now we need to do the tens place, all right? So we've got 45 written here. And because we're multiplying the tens place, we put the answer starting in the tens place right here. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. Then we add them all together, 5, 4 and 5 is 9, and we drop the 1 down. See? 195. Now to estimate this, 15 times 13, we round them off. Okay, do you remember how to round off? So remember, when we round off numbers, if the number to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it tells our number to stay the same, and when he's finished with his job, he becomes a 0. If the number to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, he tells our number to go up to the next largest number. When he's finished, he becomes a zero. So like for the 38, if we're rounding the three, the eight tells the three to go up because he's an eight, see? He says three, come on, go up. So three becomes a four, and when eight's finished with his job, he becomes a zero, all right? For 23, if we're rounding for this place value, we use the 3 to tell us what to do, okay? So just like here, 3 tells our number to stay the same. So 3 says, hey, 2, stay the same. And 2 says, okay. So 2 stays the same, and when 3 is finished with his job, he becomes a 0, and so does anybody behind him, okay? So to estimate this, the 5 tells the 1 to go up to a 2, so that's 20, and the 3 tells the 1 to stay the same, so that's a 10. 20 times 10 is 200. Look, that's pretty close to 195, isn't it? That was a good estimate. All right, so if we were to estimate and then solve these, this is what we would have. 237 times 41. If we want to estimate, 237 rounds off to 200. See, the 3 tells the 2 to stay the same. The 1 tells the 4 to stay the same. So we've got 200 times 40. We multiply the zeros, and then we multiply the 4 times the zeros, and then the 4 times the 2. We could also do it like we learned in the last couple of videos, and multiply the 2 times the 4, which is 8, and then we know we've got 10 to the third power, right? It would be 2 times 4 times 10 to the third power, right? like we learned in the last couple of videos, so it'd be 8,000. All right, so that's our estimate. Now, to do it for real, we would first multiply the ones place. 1 times 7 is 7, 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now it's the tens place turn, all right? So we have 237, and now the problem looks like this, and the 4 is going to take its turn going to ones, tens, and hundreds. 4 times 7 is 28. We carry the 2 and put the 8 down in the tens place because we're multiplying tens. 4 times 3 is 12 
plus 2 is 13, 14. We carry the 1 over here and put the 4 down. And then 4 times 2 is 8, plus the 1 is 9. Now we add them all up together. We drop the 7. 8 and 3 is 11. We carry over the 1 and put the one other one down here. 1 and 2 and 4 is 7. And then we drop the 9 and we have 9,717. See? Let's try it one more time. Here's our problem, 586 times 29. We're going to round it off first. The 8 tells the 5 to go up to the next biggest number, and when he's finished with his job, he and everyone else turns into zeros. So he turns into a 600. For 29, the 9 tells the 2 to go up to the next number, and he becomes a zero. So now we've got 600 times 30. So that's like 6 times 3 times... 10 to the third power, right? Three zeros. So we've got 18,000. See? All right. Now, to do the ones place, we're going to multiply the ones, then the tens, then the hundreds. Nine times six is 54. We carry the five and put the four down. Nine times eight is 72, plus five is 77. Nine times five is 45, plus seven is 52. So now we've got 5,274 from multiplying the ones place. Okay, so now it looks like this. Now it's the tens place turn. We're going to do the ones, then the tens, then the hundreds. Because we're multiplying the tens place, our answer starts in the tens place. 2 times 6 is 12. We carry the 1 and put the 2 down. 2 times 8 is 16, plus the 1 is 17. We carry the 1 and put the 7 down. 2 times 5 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. Now we add it all up. The 4 drops down, 7 and 2 is 9, 2 and 7 is 9, 5 and 1 is 6, and we drop the 1 down. And our answer is 16,994. Well, our estimate was, well, estimate was 18,000. That wasn't that close, was it? We were about 1,000 off, weren't we? All right, now, another part of the Common Core is knowing how to do multiplication with decimal points to the hundredths. So I'm going to show you this, okay? If we were doing one place value and we had $14.23 in seven different envelopes that all had $14.23 in them and we wanted to know what the envelopes equaled all together, we could multiply the $14.23 by seven. So we do it just as if we were doing one digit. We do all our multiplications, 7 times 3, 7 times 2, 7 times 4, and 7 times 1. We write our answer down, but then here is the tricky part. We find our decimal point, which is right here, all right, because it's dollars, and we count 1, 2. There's two spaces over that the decimal point was. That's where it's going to go in the answer. It's going to go 1, 2 spaces over. All right, so you count how many places over the decimal point is in the problem, and then that's the same amount of times that it comes over into the product. If this one had a decimal point right here, then we'd have to count that one too. It would be one, two, three, see, if there was a decimal point here. Then it would have gone over here. So however many decimal points there are in the problem, however many spaces there are in the problem, Moving over is how many you're going to move over in the answer, okay? So let's try this one. It's going to be the same thing as the two-digit number, except we're going to put the decimal space in the two spaces over. So we did the 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 8, and 2 times 2. And we got 3,708 for an answer. Then we multiplied the 3 times 4, 3 times 5, 3 times 8, and 3 times 1. And we got 5562. Five, when we added them all up together, we got 59328. I counted how many decimal places over, how many spaces over the decimal point was, and it was 1, 2. And that's where I put it in my answer. 1, 2. So I know it goes there. Okay? If there was a decimal point here, I would have counted it. I would have gone 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for the answer, it would have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, and it would have been way over there. Isn't that something? So however many spaces over 
any decimal points are in the problem is how many total spaces you're going to go over for the answer. Okay? And I'm sure we're going to cover that more in the future. But that's how you multiply by two-digit numbers. That's how you round them off. Just remember that when you're doing the tens, because you're multiplying tens, the answer starts with the tens. Okay? We're going to keep going, and we're going to talk about how we can relate multiplication to division. I hope this helped. I hope you understand, and I'll see you next video. Bye!